Rodney Nigel Mayfield. Straight butter dating and relationship talk. Now that's straight butter. Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot and informative show for you today. Today's show topic is HIV AIDS infected major urban black cities. Let's do it. All right, welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so, and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. Again, the show topic is HIV AIDS infecting major urban black cities. All right. We got a special video guest in the house on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show, Darren Tate. Welcome back to the show. Let's welcome Darren back to the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Welcome to the show, Darren. Appreciate you. What's up, man? Good to be here. Thank you. Got you got it, man. You got it. Hey, no problem, man. How's everything uh, been going, brother? Yeah, all is well. God is gracious and kind towards me, man. So yeah, all is well. All Once right. Soon. All right. You look like a million. You look like a million bucks over there. <laughs> well, I wish I had a million bucks, but since I don't have a million bucks, I'll deal with this twenty dollars I got in my pocket. But I appreciate it. <laughs> that's right, that's right. He's able to turn it into thirty, sixty, and a hundredfold. All right, man. Uh I'm glad that you're doing well. Uh let's chop it up and get into this show. Uh Darren. What are your initial thoughts about the topic of the show, HIV AIDS infected major urban black cities? First of all, it's very disturbing, very, very alarming. You know, but if you look at our society today, you know, uh, we have a very oval sexualized society. I'm not surprised. Uh, but it's just really, uh, it really is alarming and sad that, uh, that our community is uh, seemingly affected the most uh, according to statistics. So, but uh, it's, it's very alarming and uh, we definitely need to pay a lot more attention to what's going on and um, discussions like this hopefully can be uh, an inlet or outlet to, to the beginning of many discussions that need to happen in, uh, on the other platforms as well. Okay, yeah, I agree, man. Uh, this information is it's not shocking to me, but uh, the CDC, a.k.a. the Centers for Disease Control Prevention, reported uh, recently in the, center, in the city of Atlanta, the former freaknik capital of the world <laughs> has the highest infection rate of HIV AIDS in the world, man. And we're not talking about just the United States. This is the entire world. And that's that's that means they have a higher infection rate than third, third world countries. So, uh, man, what's going on in Atlanta? I mean, why is this uh, HIV AIDS infection rate so high? What, what, what's your logic on that? Yeah, now we're going to touch on some things that are a little, little sensitive because, you know, we're in this day and age now. Whatever you say, you know, it, you, you offend people, you know, when it's, especially when you start talking about the truth. And I know you and I come from a biblical uh, standpoint, so we're supported and backed by what the Bible says. And that's my truth. You know, that's the final authority that's in my life. So that's that what governs me, you know, and the others around me. But uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, same sex relations, particularly with men, uh, men on men, men with men relationships. And it's sad to say a lot of those men are still, you know, will take that and will go to that relationship and then go back over here to a woman. And we got to understand, and I did a talk about this and done research about uh, DNA. And uh, I was just curious, but even though I was dealing with it from a different perspective, but it fits what we're talking about. DNA doesn't die. We got to understand it. 
you can get bones. You can uncover bones that are 500 years or older, 1,000 years old, and there's DNA that is still alive in that bone. You can tell if, if it had a, a, a bacterial infection, what the cause of death, what the, if it was male, female, XX, you know, XY, you know, or if they can tell approximate age, maybe not the date, but an approximate age, DNA is powerful. So when you start talking about uh, sex and uh, blood transferring from man to to man, that DNA doesn't doesn't go anywhere. And then when that, that man goes to a woman, then that DNA from this other man plus his is going to this woman. And if anybody was carrying that bacterial infection, it's now going through her body. And understand that the DNA just doesn't stop in a woman's womb, but it goes up to her brain. So we're, it's very deep when we start talking about uh, uh, what men inject when a woman allows herself uh, and opens herself to a man. You really need to know who you're opening yourself up to and uh, and what's going on in their life because you're not just sleeping uh, with that man. And I'll tell any man, you're not just sleeping with that woman, but every man that she done been with in her life. Because why? DNA does not die. And it causes a whole lot of things. We're just talking about one facet of it. I was dealing with dealing with it from a more psychological perspective and why so many women are on different medications. Dealing with, uh, you, you can see all of these um, and I don't want to get off subject but just talking about the uh, bipolar disorders now that uh, and I know men have them but a lot of women that get diagnosed with these are a lot of women that are taking Xanax and stuff because of the anxieties. I know so so many women that have anxiety disorders, that have uh, bipolar disorders. They have, but when you backtrack all of that, that's because they done been with some men who had anxieties, who had bipolar, who were bipolar narcissists, and all of that thing. Their blood travels inside of them. Now, this is just another facet of it talking about AIDS. AIDS the bacterial infection, it travels through blood. And once it gets inside of the other person, yes, you can be infected and eventually uh, it, you would, it, it could be, un, un, it can go unnoticed for a while. The moment yeah. you wake up, you know, you, you, you're crying because now you're trying to figure out who gave it to you. Of course, it can go unnoticed for, for a while, for a long time. Now, I, I know I, I, uh, mentioned first about the city of Atlanta having uh, the highest age rate in the world, but also uh, the Shelby County Health Department uh, released its numbers for Memphis and Shelby County area, and the results are in. It says that Memphis and Shelby County has the second highest HIV infection rates in the United States, which is second behind the city of Miami. Now, we both are from Memphis. And so, uh, I want to ask you this question. Uh, with the infection rates as high as we have uh, seen, according to the CDC and according to the Shelby County Health Department, are you going to move differently as a single man when it comes to dating women uh, from Atlanta, from Memphis, from Detroit, or any other major city? Or do you take extra precaution anyway? But would this cause you to be more careful and more cautious? That's a great question. I appreciate you for asking it. But, you know, uh, one thing God has dealt with me about was discipline. So I've taken sex out of the equation for me. Yeah. Yeah, that's for me. I don't, I don't pass my judgment on to anybody who's sexually active. That's that's on them. Uh, but it has benefited me uh, majorly. So as the woke community would say, I operate and vibrate at a much higher level and not at my lower extremities. So that I'm not bothered by that, you know. Uh, I'm good, thank the Lord. But it's by the grace of God. I don't brag, but it's by the uh, the grace of God. Uh, but I will say, even uh, early on, when it was a uh, uh, an epidemic or even a phenomenon, uh, talking about uh, AIDS and, and uh, HIV, you know, I was moving different back then. I started moving different, even though I was still active. I was very, very, um, man, careful. You know, I stayed. I, if I didn't have any protection, I wasn't doing anything. You know, and um, 
And this, it was somebody I had been with for some years and I trusted them. And even then I was taking, I, you know, I was taking a big risk because you're trusting somebody, you know, at their word that they're just going to be with you and you're just going to be with them. And we see how that works. When you start factoring in uh, different rural numbers, as 80% of the women only choose amongst 20% of the men, that's a reason why there's a whole lot of, you know, uh, uh, disease going around. But it's, it has nothing to do with a lot of us men who are um, a lot more discreet and careful and, um, as you just said, move differently than the average man does. Well, i tell you this, man. Uh, I've been moving differently uh, for over 20 years because uh, I don't let anybody in my space. I don't let any woman in my space. I'm very selective and very particular with who I deal with. Now, uh, me being a former military guy, I've been all around the world, 25 different uh, countries, uh, five different continents. And so uh, I've been there and done that. <laughs> you know, I wasn't an angel in the military and most military guys were not angels. But uh, the thing is, uh, these numbers here in Memphis, because I reside in Memphis, it gives me great pause. Uh, I always do my due diligence when I get involved with a woman. Uh, first, there's going to be a lot of questions that I'm going to have to ask her. And uh, I do believe in doing background checks and investigations. Uh, hopefully, I don't know for sure. I know the uh, there's a certain law, uh, HIPAA law, where certain medical information can't be uh, exposed. Uh, but... If you have HIV, that should be totally different because you have people who are out here still infecting people unknowingly and knowingly. Now, mm -hmm. what do you think, Darren? Do you think that uh, over five, or over eight, nine, ten thousand people in the city of Memphis that has HIV and even more in the city of Atlanta, do you think the majority of those people are saying that, well, you know what? I contracted AIDS. I'm going to repent and give my life to God and I'm not going to have sex anymore in my life. Do you think those people are saying that? What's the percentage of people do you think are sitting down and will never have sex again? Probably a uh, one tenth of a percent. One tenth of a percent. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I say that because I have a story of two women that I know who had female cousins and female friends that had HIV AIDS and they were still having sex with men. And these are black women. These are black women. So, but you also have black men and white men and Hispanic men and Asian men. These people, once they get that disease, they feel like I have to pay somebody back. I'm not going to be the only one that's carrying this burden in my body. Well, yeah. the thing is, it all boils down to sin. Okay. God tells us not to have sex outside of marriage, right? Yeah. God says in uh, Leviticus 18 to 22 that a man should not lie with another man. It's an abomination, okay? God also said in Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 26 through 27, that women turn from the natural affections for, uh, for a man and men turn from the natural affection for a woman and they have sex with like kind, Okay. Uh, men having sex with men and women having sex with women. And God called that an abomination. In fact, God said that the payback, the recompense, which is the payment for a man having sex with another man is AIDS, HIV AIDS. Now, the Bible did not say HIV AIDS, but God said that the recompense is in his body. Okay? That's disease. You know, now... Uh, the CDC, as well as the Shelby County Health Commission said the majority of the HIV AIDS cases are amongst homosexual men. Amongst homosexual men. OK, like 46 percent. But they said that tw in uh, Memphis, 22 percent of black women, the newly infected cases are among black women. Twenty two percent. That's a high number, man. Yeah. So that means that these women are having sex with multiple partners yeah. and these men are having sex. Uh, the gay men are having sex with 
so-called straight men, but they're really down low men. And those men probably think that they're not gay, but they are. You have sex with a man one time, you're gay. Unless you repent and you never do it again, but you are a gay man. And so, and these uh, down low brothers, down low men are going back, having sex with their partners, with their girlfriends, with their wives. And it sort of reminds me of a multi-level marketing uh, business. Yeah. When you go out and have sex with three people, and those three people go out and have sex with three people, and those three people have sex with three new people, and, and those three people have sex with three new people, and before you know it, man, you have an epidemic in that particular urban city. And that's what's going on in Memphis. That's what's going on in Atlanta and all these other uh, major cities throughout the United States. And so, you know, my thing is, I believe, and I've been to San Francisco, I haven't been around that environment, but you know, San Francisco has a reputation for sure, uh, or had at least. Uh, I believe Atlanta is the new San Francisco. You know, man, Atlanta is the new San Francisco. In fact, it's worse than San Francisco ever was as it relates to homosexual, as it relates to the homosexual population, and also as it relates to the HIV AIDS infection rates, because the CDC said they had the highest infection rate throughout the world. Throughout the world, we're talking about even including third world countries like Djibouti, like Ethiopia, like Gambia, like Guinea, uh, like like Haiti, like Laos, uh, like Liberia, like Madagascar, like Malawi, and, and a ton of others. Atlanta is a city, not a country. How can a city have more infections than a country? That is an epidemic, man. Yeah. It really is. And it just comes down, like you said, man, it's just seeing man does not have the power or the authority to ordain what God has already said is wrong. What God has already said is of a cursed. He, of we, can't, we can't politics won't work. We can we can say men and men and women and women all day long. You know, and we can legalize it. But if you look, look at the dictionary of 1839, the original dictionary uh, that carries that, the word legal really means the undoing of God's law, quote unquote. So when we're legalizing stuff, knowingly, it means to undo God's law. If God has already said you can't do this, let's legalize it. Now you can do it. But God ain't changed. The Bible says, God said he, he, he has not changed will not change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and what? Forevermore. So, right. if he said it was wrong way back in Leviticus, <laughs> you know, if, if um, who's that? One and all son, was it Sham? Who? Uh, ha Ham that looked upon his nakedness. Yeah. If it was, yeah. if he was cursed back then, it's, God ain't changed. It was known amongst men then that it was, it was a, a sin to even look upon another man's nakedness much less talking about laying with a man so but we're in this society now where you can do what you feel everybody needs you know it's man the dude i can't take i i you know this is really sad it's really sad and, and, and then you have these sissified bible compromising pastors false prophets uh that's uh enabling the LGBTQ community by saying God loves you. It's okay for you to love who you want to love. And uh, if you want to marry a woman, the Pope said it's okay. Uh, just don't, uh, we're not going to uh, look at it as you being married, but it's okay if you want to have a, a partner of uh, the same sex. Uh, but God said it's not. See, uh, and, and then uh, pastors like T.D. Jake said he he's evolved and evolving on homosexuality. Well, when you say you're evolving, you're saying that I have changed my stance from what I used to believe. And see, God don't change. As you said in uh, Hebrews 13 and 8, it says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever, which means if you're speaking on the authority of God, you speak God's words, even though it may cause you to lose friends, it may cause you to lose jobs. You have to stand firm as a Christian that God's word is right and no man can change that. And so, man, we're definitely in the final days on this earth, without a doubt, yeah. without a doubt. Throughout history, uh, anytime 
the, the first telltale sign of a nation falling away from God or turning its back on God is through its sexual immorality. That's that's been throughout the Bible. It I mean, so you look at what we're doing right now. Even I believe the state of California uh, last year, I forgot what month it was. They they, they changed their posture on uh, pedophilia. Now they having sex with a child is sexual preference. <laughs> Come on, man. That's where we're going. That's why this well, society is legalizing. Again, the word legal, no matter what you want to apply it to, means the undoing of God's law. They're legalizing yeah. it. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, man, bro. Well, you know what, man? In uh, Genesis 19, God sent two angels to Sodom and Gomorrah yeah. to destroy both cities with, with, with fire and sulfur. Okay. So the thing is, if God destroyed those cities because of uh, homosexual activities, uh, two men and two women, or a bunch of men and a bunch of women, he destroyed it because of sodomy, because of debauchery, because of lascivious sexual behavior, because of deviancy. So the thing is, if God destroyed those cities, uh, do you think he's not going to eventually destroy uh, this world? Because of our sinful activities, and when I say our, I'm saved. And so, uh, Christians, uh, let me say this, folks, uh, so that you don't group a Christian and and the non-Christian in the same boat. A Christian is anybody who recognizes that they are lost without a savior. That savior is Jesus Christ. Okay, you have to recognize that, Lord, I'm a sinner. I, I'm lost. I don't like this lifestyle that I'm leading. And so. I repent of my sins and I confess and believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and Lord and that he died on the cross, was buried and was resurrected on the third day. The Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, to say those words means nothing if you don't live those words. You see what I'm saying? You have a lot of people who confess with their mouth, but their hearts are far from God. And, and Jesus also said on that day of judgment, People are going to say, Lord, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out demons in your name. I healed in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So you actually have people who go to church every Sunday and Wednesday who are going straight to hell because they did not have a heart transformation. See, just repeating the words means nothing if your lifestyle hasn't changed. Now, a Christian is not sinless. A Christian is going to sin, but a Christian should not love sinning. Like they did when they were in the world. A Christian wants to sin less. A Christian wants to sin. They don't want to sin at all. But when you as a true believer in Christ do commit a sin, you repent. And the Bible says as far as the east is from the west, God will not remember your sins anymore. Now, there are consequences that comes with sin. And every sin has a consequence and every consequence has to be paid. Whether you're a Christian or not. Now, for the believer... Uh, which is a Christian, it says that there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, okay? So when a Christian sin, there's a consequence that's going to result uh, from that sin, but you're not going to lose your salvation because you can't lose your salvation if you're truly saved. Because Jesus said, who my father has given me, no man can pluck them out of my hand. So when Jesus said he never knew you, that means you were never saved. Okay, man, sorry to go so long, but Darren, why do you think the HIV AIDS rate in in, uh, in these urban cities such as Atlanta, Memphis, Miami, et cetera, uh, which are majority uh, uh, black and brown populated cities has skyrocketed so greatly, man? goes back to um, the statistics that I rendered you uh, a little while ago. You know, 80% okay. of the women only choose amongst 20% of the men. So you got the majority of women are attracted to and are looking for the same men. So these men, you know, a lot of those men are uh, fueling this pandemic that we're having. Because a lot of those men, you know, yeah, they, they when you, these type of men are usually in the upper 3% of the men. You know, that these all these women want. These women want, you know, a man got to be six feet tall or better. You know, they call them tall, dark, and handsome. Got to be making, got to have, you know, a strong six figures. A hundred just ain't good no more. You got to have, you know, quite a few uh, uh, six figures. 
Man, you got to have, you know, the latest of everything. They call it the drip in your clothes, and you got to have on, you know, twelve hundred dollars worth of clothes on. You know what I'm saying? Just to look like, okay, he got money, and just the whole thing. So these women are attracted to that, while fifty one percent of the men are single and childless, and over here, hard workers, most probably blue collar workers. You know, loyal men, men that are. Uh, will be great husbands, but because they don't fit this over here, maybe he's five eight and chubby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe he only makes the median income, which is about forty two, forty five thousand dollars. That's not enough for mo most of these women. You know, so they're choosing these same type of men, and these men aren't interested, and in, most of them aren't interested in marrying. At least not in our Western culture. You don't have no problem with the hookup. This is the hookup culture that we're in right now. You know what I'm saying? So, and and uh, it's unfortunate, but when you're having uh, non-contractual or uncontractual sex, meaning you're not married, you're just out here doing it, those are, and you've already uh, uh, said a lot about that, about uh, fornication, listen, that's what, it comes with it. You know, the wages, there are wages of sin, you know, and you might not like what you're getting paid, but compensation comes with that. And unfortunately... <laughs> We're talking about one of those subjects tonight, you know, which is uh, AIDS and uh, HIV, man. But it, it just comes down to how we're choosing. Women are choosing the same men, and then you got men that aren't godly men. They're not stand-up men who can say to who has the the strength like you and I do to say, "No, nah, uh, ma'am, back up, hold on, hold on." I'm not impressed with your looks, baby. I'm not. You pretty? What that mean? You know what I'm saying? To, to a guy like me, you got to come a whole lot stronger with looks. I've all, I've had pretty all my life. I'm not. I'm not excited about it. You know, I'm excited about your brain, your conversation. You know, your your outlook on life, and uh, do I feel the presence of God? I was around uh, this young lady one time, and I I told her. If I was to close my eyes when you got in my car, if, if my eyes were closed, I couldn't see, and my car door opened like it did, and you sat down and never spoke a word, I would swear, excuse my expression, but this is what I said, a nigga just got in my car, and not a female that I was picking up to go out on the date. You know why? That's not good. That's not a good thing. And I, I had to explain, when a woman comes into a man's environment, man, it should, man, the, the sense, the femininity, I, I mean, the atmosphere should change. You'd be like, and you, you might make you want to just inhale and take a deep breath and be like, ooh, man, excuse me. You know what I'm saying? But this, these women that we get out here, man, they smell like weed, uh, weeds, right? I mean, I said weed, but they smell like uh, the weed that they smoke, and then it gets all in their fake hair and it smell like corn chips. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand it, bro. Can't stand it, man. You know, and they, they got the nerve to act like, you know, they the pride. Like, ma'am. <laughs> anyway, don't get me up on that because, you know, I can go in on that for a minute. Listen, if a woman wants to be the prize, then operate like you're the prize and not uh, come half hearted. You know, uh, uh, you said that this woman got in your car and she, I, I don't know what she was smelling like, uh, but Dussy or whatever. I don't know what it was, but uh, I expect a woman to smell good all the time, to look good all the time. Now, I, I'm not uh, against a woman having a weave in her hair, but it has to be professionally done and, and you don't need to be patting your head all day and uh, taking a rat tail comb, scratching your head in public. Now those things are turned off to me, but th uh, let, let, let's, let me get back to this question right quick. I, you, you probably want to respond to it, but let, let me get back to this question. You can answer, uh, respond to what I said. Uh, as it relates to uh, that high population in the age rate uh, in Atlanta and these other urban cities, uh, do you think it could be a lack of not having a, a godly foundation through Jesus Christ, or uh, could it be poverty? Could it be uh, based on socioeconomics? Could it be based on poor choices or all of the above? All of the above. You just can't sing a lot, one. All of the above. Having access to resources is a big deal because, you know, I'm, with, with the resources I operate at now, I have 
a lot more responsibility than when I, you know, several years ago didn't have the access that I have now. So you make different decisions back then, very careless decisions. But the more responsibility, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. You know, so if you haven't been given much, there's not much required of you. So you make a whole lot of, you know, senseless decisions. You know, you don't think about consequences. But when you are operating at at the levels that I vibrate and others vibrate, you know, you you think about consequences before you start doing anything. You know, there's certain situations I would not put myself into because of where I'm vibrating at now. I, I can't do that. I can't. I have way too. I, I've told several women, ma'am, I don't know you. I got way too much to lose dealing with somebody I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So you. So everything you said are all components of why we're making some of these decisions that are being made to keep uh, this uh, pandemic fueled. In our yeah. Community. Yeah. You know what, man? Uh, I thought that uh, Atlanta uh, abandoned the freak nick. Did they? Yeah. But no. Are you sure? Are you sure? Like I said, yeah, but no, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I say that because listen, uh, I remember back in the day, uh, the Freak Nick used to go on. Uh, I, I never went to it, but I saw photos uh, of the things that happened there. Uh, the Freak Nick, I guess, it happened uh, in a particular part of town, in parks, in cars, or uh, wherever, wherever they could go. But now, man, the Freak Nick has, uh, even though it may officially be canceled in Atlanta, it's still going on. You you got Puff Daddy freak out freak offs. Uh, you got pound town parties. Uh, you, you got switch hitting parties. These folks have moved from the streets into the condos, the houses, the hotels, the cars underneath the bleachers and everywhere else because it's indicative that they're still freaking because they are the most infected city in the world. They have the highest rate of HIV AIDS in the world. So a lot of stuff is still going on down down there. And it's not just the homosexual men, but it's the uh, women as well, because these women are having multiple men as it relates to uh, having sexual partners. And, and uh, you know, these 65 girly men down in Atlanta got uh, more BBLs than the actual women do. And, and they're luring, luring the so-called uh, straight men again into engaging in homosexual sex, man. And these men uh, eventually go back to their partners. They go back to their lovers, to their wives, to their girlfriends, and they give them AIDS. Knowingly giving them AIDS or unknowingly giving them AIDS. And so when that uh, particular couple break up, most people don't stay, stay by themselves. They go and find somebody new. And so they're spreading AIDS to them as well. I, I think it's a catastrophe, man. Uh, not just in Atlanta or Memphis or Miami or Detroit, uh, D.C. It's a catastrophe in the black community. You know, when I sit back and look at all of the negativities in the black community, uh, this is just one more uh, negativity. Uh, you have the infant mortality rate. Uh, you have black people who uh, are killing one another at a extremely high rate. In fact, Memphis Tennessee is known as the most dangerous city in the United States. And, and man, we have to do better, man, whether it's AIDS, whether it's the infant mortality rate, whether it's homicides, we have to do better, man. And I think that uh, overall, on a, a larger scale, that black people really don't love one another. We don't. And our actions are indicative that we don't. You know, there's there's a lot of truth to what you just said. Um and it's really sad that I feel more comfortable among my would-be oppressors than I do living in a community with people that look like me. Well, I think you would have a lot of black people who would say that. Listen, I'm not abandoning my black uh, people. I, I love them, but I'm also uh, aware of my surroundings. And uh, that's with anybody, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're Asian, because a white man in a thousand dollar suit will blow your brains out with steal every dime in your bank account, just like a brother would, or just like a sister would. So you have to really uh, have discernment, man, and and uh, do your due diligence when you put yourself in the environment 
of, of people that you don't know. And you have to, uh, again, you have to put them to the test. You have to ask questions. It's sort of like it is a job interview. When you're meeting women as it relates to this HIV AIDS thing, when you're meeting women, you're going to have to uh, put her through an interview. Now, if she don't like the process, then you're going to have to tell her to move on. Uh, it, it's not like you're trying to be a detective, but in essence, it is because you're trying to make sure that this woman uh, has your best interest at heart. Yeah, man, I, to I totally agree with you on that, brother. You were saying something earlier. You were talking about the women patting their, them wigs and weaves and stuff, man. With, the rat, with the rat tail combs and with the hand, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've never, I, I don't think I recall seeing a mature woman with weave like 30s or 40s do that. You know, they may do that uh, when nobody's watching, but I, I see these youngsters patting, these young women patting their heads all the time. And I said, why don't you just use your rat tail comb? Yeah, I ain't got one. So it's just doing that. You know, I mean, that's that's kind of minor for me, but I wouldn't date a woman who uh, is patting her head and digging up in her scalp with a red tail comb. This is what bothers me. This is what bothers me. To see a woman who got her weave down and she and the whole time she's talking and riding in the car or y'all walking or you sitting at the dinner table the whole time she just doing her hair like this the whole time the whole time this time right now somebody told me and i said something about it on my channel and of course you know i got a lot of feminists that follow me they can't wait till i say something and they you're gonna be in trouble you're gonna be in trouble when they hear this video man and they hear you talking about they, they their weaves hey I'm all right, man. I got I got thick skin, man. I was built for this. I tell them all the time, come on with it. Don't get mad when I start firing back. But and I usually don't say much, you know. I have a way of doing things, and I let them say what they're gonna say. I just be laughing, but because they get triggered at the little bitty things that that I say. But just constantly, man. Just constant. Just the whole time. The whole time. I, I can understand you trying to reposition maybe once in a while. You know, I understand. I don't, but man, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Are these young? Are these young girls? Uh, have you have you seen a, a mature woman, forties, fifties, uh, uh, even up in thirties, doing that? Both. Oh, okay. I will honestly say more of the younger, okay, the older. But you'll come across that one, man. I'll be like, I told one, I'm like, just take it out. You know, it's not yours. If it's bothering you, that you got to keep combing through with your fingers, just take it out. Did she curse you out? <laughs> <laughs> if she didn't verbally, she probably did in her mind. Uh, and, 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 and if she didn't verb didn't do it verbally, you just ran across the the, right, the wrong one because uh, 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 most women, especially these young young ladies, would have gave you a piece of their mind, and you already know that. Oh right, man. Like I said, <laughs> I got thin skin. She, you know, she's like, "You wrong for that?" I said, "No, you wrong for that." One woman just sit in here and play with some hey, if it's bothering you, take it out. It's not yours. Just, yeah. Why? Is it itching your neck or I mean, what is it? You know, but somebody told me that and I, I didn't finish my statement earlier on my uh Facebook page that it's a condition. She actually said what the condition was. I can't remember. I didn't write it down. I should have and looked it up. But I guess it's some type of disorder or something like that, where you they just sit there and just the whole time. I say, well, whatever disorder it is, I don't like it. So that's just a deal breaker for me. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes, that's what it is. It, it, there's nothing else other than that. Uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, uh, back to the HIV AIDS uh, conversation that uh, I knew of two women that said that they had uh, a female cousin and a female friend that were still having sex with men. Uh, and they had HIV and AIDS. And so just to let the women know that women, uh, you're punishing men and giving them AIDS just because someone gave you AIDS. And that's a sin. Number one, it's, it's, it's a sin. And it's also a sin if the friend and the cousin know that their friend or cousin is spreading AIDS to a man, to a man or a man spreading AIDS to a woman and you don't say anything. That's called the sin of omission. Okay, it's a sin. Because there, there's no way that one of my family members can have AIDS and I knew they were dating someone 
whether male or female, and me not first warn them to stop. And if they didn't stop, I would tell the police. I would t- I would turn them in because I cannot be a part of uh, of knowing somebody is doing something like that. You are actually. Uh, uh, let, let, let me say this, man. You are actually uh, contributing to that individual uh, dying at some point in time in their lives when you give them HIV AIDS. Everybody don't live 30, 40 years. Now, I know now you can live much longer because of the medication, but HIV AIDS, is there's no cure for it. There's no cure at all. But but let me, let me say this, man, and uh, we're almost about to wrap it up, but let me say this. HIV and AIDS don't just come from people who are uh, outside of the church, sinners, wicked people, as God would say. Uh, it's a pastor in Houston, Texas, by the name of Ralph West II. He's a assistant pastor at the Church Without Walls in Houston, Texas. Last October the 23rd, uh, a jury awarded this woman... $2.45 million because Ralph West, who met this female on Facebook, had a sexual affair with her and he gave her herpes. And the jury awarded her uh, $2.45 million. Now, he's the assistant pastor. And so I said that to say this, that a lot of people outside the church uh, who are living in sin, these homosexual men and homosexual women, but you have a lot of heterosexual women and men. You have people who are in the church, some saved and some are not, who are spreading these diseases as well. And so even though Pastor West did not give her HIV, but man, was $2.45 million worth it to have sex with her and give her AIDS? And then what he said is that, I know where I got the herpes from. I got it from my baby mama. That's what he said. You can look it up, pull up Ralph Douglas West the second on your Google page, and you can read the entire story because it's a part of the uh, the, the court transcript. And uh, I just want to say that, but people, listen, black people, we need to really get ourselves together. We need to first uh, acknowledge that we're living in sin, and we need to repent of our sins and 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 turn uh, 180 degrees, turn the opposite direction, because this world. Uh, there's there's nothing positive. There's nothing good in this world system. This world system is trying to take you down, you know. And Satan uh, comes. He he's like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He he steals, kills, and destroys. And so we need to uh, you know start living for God and do what's right by God. So Derek, uh, what are your final thoughts? Do you have any final thoughts uh, about this topic? Uh, can you leave my audience with something that's promising and not so grim, if possible? At the end of the day, Jesus, his way works. You know, that's that his way works. I mean, we can't legalize ourselves away from him and then expect him to deliver, expect him to heal, expect him to protect us. We put all these demands and expectations while at the, at the same token, we legalize him out of our lives. We legalize him, you know, out of our decisions that we that we want to make or how we feel about ourselves. I feel I should be this. I feel I should be that. You know, I feel that me being with a man is nothing wrong with that, you know, because love is love. No matter who you are, that stuff. Listen, man, only Jesus' way is the only way. And, and uh, outside of it, it doesn't work, you know, and we can't fix it outside of it. We have to go back to the creator. When your Ford breaks down, you don't take it to Honda to get it fixed. You go back to the Ford dealership or at least an authorized Ford agent or a mechanic who has his certifications from Ford. You know, that means they went to some type of training dealing with strictly with the uh, vehicles that that manufacturer vehicles. You do not take Mercedes to BMW. You know, not that, but you can take a, your Mercedes back to a Mercedes dealership and know why, because they are the creator of that vehicle. They know it inside and out. You don't take it to somebody that's trying to fish around and look and see and perhaps, no, no. They know exactly what to do. So, our creator, 
knows us. Uh, we should take ourselves back to our creator and realign ourselves back with him so that he can fix everything that we done messed up. We can't fix it if we could. Man. Paul said, if the law were enough, then Christ's death would be in vain. Yep. That's what he said. Well, it, ain't, it ain't enough. We can't fix it just because, you know, it's Sabbath uh, at six o'clock a couple of hours ago. That ain't good enough. We can't fix it because we go to church services on Saturday or Sunday and we go to Bible study during the week. You sing in the choir. You know, I'm a musician. So because I play the organ, you know, or whatever, that, that ain't good enough. We got to realign ourselves back with God's purpose for our lives. And we have to, uh, if we're going to be disciples, it means discipline one. We have to be disciplined. You know, in ourselves, our, our flesh is our first responsibility to put under subjection. Exactly. So there is hope, but the hope might not be what most people want. Most people want to continue to do what they do and let God just fix it whenever they, you know, uh, uh, it's too much for them to handle. You know, no, 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 no. There is hope, but hope that I have to offer is Christ. There is no other hope. So all the other hope is dead. It don't even exist. The only hope right. that I know that are still alive and well and doing well, you know, is I call them, you know, Yeshua, Yahweh Shah, you know, Elohim, uh, man, uh, Yah. Come on, man. That, that, that's, look, that is the only hope. That's the only way. That's what I know. And I know the woke community, I get I get attacked all the time. Like, man, well, everything that you know, I can't believe you still believe in this and that and the other. Man, I don't believe. I know. I know. I'm past belief. I know. That's why when I'm talking to them, I'm very careful that I don't use the word believe. I know. But why is it that my Christ, my Jesus, is the only one that's under, always under constant attack? Hmm. I ain't never heard nobody attack Allah. I ain't never heard nobody attack Buddha. I ain't never heard nobody attack uh, Elwan Hubbard. I ain't hmm. never heard nobody attack Satan. The Satanist community, we got the school right over here in my neighborhood, literally just a few blocks away, where the Satanists are actually having a, 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 a after school daycare program for the community. Satanists, now the Satan's church. <laughs> it caused a big uproar, but you know what? The city says, well, they have a 501c3 just like any other church organization, and we cannot deny them access to the public school because they operate underneath, you know, that status. But, hey, ain't nobody out here picketing. Did nobody, you know, sit up here and say, I don't believe in Satan. It's all a lot of joke. The only one that gets attacked is my Savior. And I tell you what, it ain't because of what I, uh, just for what I read. It's because of my experiences with him. That's why Paul said, I didn't come to you with enticing words unto man's wisdom, but what? Power and demonstration. That's what the church is lacking. When is the last miracle that we've actually seen performed? You know, I've seen people levitating in the air. I've seen trees that have fell down across uh, highways. We were about to spin out of control in the storm and we shout the name Jesus and that 30 foot tree stand back up. I've seen people with legions on their body from AIDS, from uh, HIV and go back to the doctor after we pray for them the next day and it's gone. The legions left while we was in prayer. I've seen, I can go on and on. I've seen blind people uh, for the first time see. I've seen and was sitting behind a lady in a service that was so anointed that her, she was in a wheelchair. She had crippling bone cancer. Yeah, uh, 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 not cancer, uh, uh, arthritis. She, it, was, it was severe. And her bones began to break back in place. Nobody touched her. She came in in a wheelchair for the last several weeks. That day she got she got up and took off running. Dude, I could go on and on. That is the belt, the belt buckle to my belief, and it should be the belt buckle to all of our beliefs because it should be our experiences. But most people who claim that they that they serve Christ, they only know him in word. They don't know him by you know extraordinary, just beyond man's ability. That certain events will happen right in front of your eyes because there are not enough men and women who are that, that God can actually use. 
as a tool that his anointing can work through so people can see this man but i yearn for that god is using me he's he's got some he has a weight put a weight upon me and we're going to be seeing some things in the very near future but man yes there's hope to all of this and it's christ Okay, you said something that AIDS can't be healed. AIDS can be healed. God can heal it. But also, um, there's a brother uh, that God has put on this earth. His name is, uh, well, I'm going to say his name because I don't want to uh, offend our channel. But uh, food and herbs can actually cure AIDS. It can. Because it's just cleansing of the blood. And, and you have to get the toxicity out of the blood. I think it's called one of the items that you could use is called Sapa Sarilla, Sapa Sarilla or something like that. But that's a root that you could use that's really good in cleaning, cleansing the blood. However, you got to change your behavior, though, you know. So, yeah, that's hope. And I pray for everyone. Love you, man. I'm sorry that I was a little winded there, but uh, Are you love good? You, man. and I enjoy, enjoy this man, for real. You good. You good. Well, you know what? God can heal supernaturally. Uh, when God healed uh, the woman, he said, go and sin no more. Uh, because uh, something worse will come upon you if, if you go and keep living in, in, in sin. OK, so God can heal supernaturally. God can heal through medicine. And a lot of things can be healed based on changing your diet, you know, uh, eating uh, more fruits and vegetables, exercising. Uh, but a lot of stuff, um, a lot of illnesses comes as a result of our diet. But we know age didn't come as a result of diet. Uh, so God can heal anything. But. Uh, according to man's study, there is no cure for HIV AIDS outside of God through Jesus Christ. Well, hey, my brother, Darren, I'd like to thank you for coming on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show and sharing your thoughts and views on this disturbing topic about the skyrocketing HIV AIDS rate in the black urban cities. I hope to have you back on another topic in the near future. Let's give Darren Tate a round of applause and thank him for coming on the Straight Brother Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Hey, man, thank you for coming on the show, my brother, and uh, God bless you. God bless you too, man. Appreciate you. Thank you. If you like what you've heard, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel. God bless you. See you next show. Thank you.